All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be talking about last night's game between the Minnesota Timberwolves Boston Celtics battle of the number ones. The number one seed in the West, number one seed in the East going up, and it was a really, really intense and good game. We're going to talk about it here in today's video. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. We're upset a lot. We are on the road to 500 subscribers, so if you enjoyed the content, hitting the subscribe button would mean a whole lot to me. And uh, yeah, look to my Twitter and TikTok and stuff like that in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So last night, we come into this game battle of the two best teams in the league. The number one seed in the West, Minnesota Timberwolves. The number one seed in the East and the entire NBA, the Boston Celtics. And it was a really, really good game. Um, very close to the entirety of it. You know, um, first half was very close. You know, Boston got off to a little bit of a big lead. Uh, Jalen Brown had a big uh, first quarter. Then the second quarter, Minnesota comes back. And led by Anthony Edwards, Conflict Towns had a really good first half as well. And then from then on, it was just kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all third quarter and fourth quarter play. Uh, we get to the fourth quarter. And yeah, Minnesota has a nine point lead with four minutes left. This game. And then also he had a nine point lead with three and a half minutes left. And from then on, Al Warford is the three. Jim Brown gets the free throw and hits a couple shots. Ken Alexander Walker as well. Really confident. Hit a bunch of big shots late in this fourth quarter. Back to back. Like, well, he had a layup and then he had a big three pointer. He actually went on a little run by himself. He went on like a, a, like, seven point run by himself in this fourth quarter jason tatum then turns up it's a layup you know then hits a big step back three to make it a two-point game with a minute 41 left then he gets fouled with 36 seconds left hits a free throw misses the second but Derek white of course gets the offense rebound they move the ball around and drew hotter gets a wide open corner or wing three or was it the corner i think corner three to make it a two-point lead for boston but then anthony edwards comes down gets fouled it's two free throws tatum misses the game winning jumper and we go to overtime and overtime tim Wolves get off to a good start Call towns a bunch of, bunch of big shots and then Jason Tatum turns up, hits two free throws, then hits a layup, and then gets a steal and hits a three-pointer in transition to make it a five-point lead. And from then on, Boston would eventually end up winning this game 127-120 in overtime. They go to 18-0 at home, perfect at home. They also go to 29-8 on the year while Minnesota falls to 26-11. and Not only a half game above the Oklahoma City Thunder for the number one seed in the Western Conference, but yeah, it was a great game. Uh, team stats, Minnesota shot 46% of the field, Boston shot 43%. Um, Boston hit 19 threes in this game. Minnesota hit 14. The Celtics were 30 for 31 from the free throw line, while Boston, well, Minnesota was 18 for 20. Uh, yeah, it was a really, really good game. Jason Tatum, 45 points, shot 13 for 26, 6 for 11 from 3, 13 for 14 from the free throw line. Really turned up in the fourth quarter overtime. You know, uh, it was weird. They did finish up with it. It didn't feel like he had a 45 point game, but he just hit some big shots late in this one that really you know turned it to the next level and Jalen Brown also at 35 and 11 he shot 13 for 13 from the free throw line it was 9 for 16 from the field those two they think they have two losses when they have 30 more combined and they have like 20 something wins so those two phenomenal uh Johade hit some big shots 12 5 and 4 Derek White even though he didn't have a great shooting game you know made some big plays he got the offensive rebound to get Johade the three-pointer you know makes impact plays like that he had 9 6 and 6 Horford had 9 8 5 as well he had three threes without Porzingis and without Rudy Gobert. I didn't realize Rudy Gobert wasn't going to be playing this game until late, and I was like, oh, shoot, Rudy Gobert's not playing. And Minnesota still kept up, you know? Anthony Edwards finished with 29 points, 6 rebounds, shot 11 for 25. Cat had a really good game, 25, 13, and 6. Shot 8 for 17 from the field. 17, 8, 5 for Kyle Anderson. 19 and 10 off the bench for Nas Reedy at 3 blocks. As well in this game, then Nikhil Alexander-Walker at 15 points. He had 3 three-pointers. Uh, Fortune Jane McDaniels fouled out this game. He had just 5 points. was 2 for 8. He fouled out. Um, and this one only played 24 minutes, which was tough. Uh, but yeah, this is this was a really good game. And honestly, I want to talk a lot more about Minnesota in this one. Uh, but for Boston, starting with them, you know, I mean, they're the team to beat, obviously. Like they're the team that that is the favorite right now. Should be the favorite to win a championship. Um, they're just too good. You know, I mean, we got the Jays doing what they do. You know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum being the All Star NBA guys they have. Uh, Drew Holiday is just a winning player, you know, uh, on both ends. He gets it done defensively, takes on some of the best matchups and does a pretty good job. And then offensively, just does the little things, makes the winning plays. You know, is a winning player. Derek White as well. Derek White has been phenomenal. Arguably probably the best role player in the NBA this year, Derek White has been. You know, uh, the three-point shooting has come around. Defensively, he's one of the best offensive. He just makes winning plays. Again, he made a winning play last night where he got the offensive rebound after the Tatum is free throw. If he doesn't get that offensive rebound, Minnesota probably wins that game. You know, like he gets off a rebound and, 
you know, they move the ball around to find Drew Holiday for that corner three-point shot. That's big. And then Al Horford, still at, what, 38 years old, 37 years old, still doing what he does, you know, making big plays, playing good defense, hitting threes, rebounding, you know, doing all those things. When Porzingis is out there and healthy, Porzingis obviously, honestly has been one of the most impactful players on Boston. I feel like when Porzingis is out there, I mean, without Porzingis, they're still a really good team. But with Porzingis out there, that turns them into the favorite. You know, I feel like if Porzingis is out there playing healthy, like, the Celtics are dang near, like, unbeatable. You know? Like, when Porzingis is out there, they ball. I feel like he just brings a whole new dynamic to this team. You know? So, yeah, Boston, they're the team to beat right now. They are the favorites. And they are just an amazing basketball team all around. For Minnesota, man, their team, you have to take them seriously. You know? I understand you know, they don't have a lot of experience in the playoffs and stuff like that. Uh, they just kind of came good. Last year, they had some moments. Um, but, you know, didn't really show it till the end of the year. And I know they're not really an experienced team compared to all the other teams like Denver, Phoenix, it's D- Dallas, and teams like that. But take Minnesota seriously. I'm not saying put them in the contender range. I'm not saying that. But Minnesota is a really good team. And they're all right, you know. Anthony Edwards has taken the start jump. He'll be in the All-Star game this year. Whether it's a starter or a bench, who knows. But he will be there in the All-Star game. He had a bunch of just big shots yesterday as well. He hit some big shots. He hit like a three-pointer. I think Boston was going on a run. It was like a six-point game. Anthony Edwards just got the ball and just pulled the three and hit it. Like he has so many tough shots. He wants the moment. You know, he's just super, super good on both ends. Uh, Anthony Towns, he had a really tough start to the year trying to figure out where he fits in. But now he's really starting to ball. You know, uh, he had a bunch of he had a really good game last night as well. He's been passing the ball really well, rebounding the ball. You know, of course he's one of the best big man shooters of all time, so he can do that. Uh, but yeah, he's been great. He's balling in on the defensive end as well, so that's great. Rudy Gobert has turned around this year after having a really rough year last year in Minnesota. His second year, he's come out. He's right now probably the defensive player of the year. You know, like he's just been protecting the rim, doing Rudy Gobert things, and really fitting into, into this offense well. Him and Cal kind of making it work. And then I love the role players they have around him. You know, uh, Jan McDaniels, when he is playing, he's missed a lot of time this year. But when he is there, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. And then offensively, you know, he can hit a couple shots and kind of be a little bit of a third kind of score just in case Anthony Edwards or Confidence Towns are having a bad night. You have Jaden McDaniels. Mike Conley also didn't play in last night's game. Um, but when Mike Conley is out there, they just run really good basketball. Mike Conley, I mean, at this point, he's a really good veteran point guard, knows how to play, makes winning plays. You know, puts everyone in the right position to succeed. Hits big, timely threes. Like, he just does all that stuff really well. Um, yeah, well, that's where they're starting live. But then their bench, too. Like, Nas Reed is probably the best backup center in the league. You know, he's he can get buckets. He can get buckets. He can defend well, despite being a little bit undersized at the center position. He does really, really good things. Colin Anderson, just a high IQ basketball player that makes the right plays. You know, while he's passing the ball defensively, rebounding, getting to the rim. He does all that. The Alexander Walker has kind of turned his career around a little bit. Coming to Minnesota, he's looked the best he's ever looked. You know, being a kind of a 3 and D guard that can also handle it a little bit. So that's great for him. Um, they got guys like Jordan McLaughlin, Shake Milton that could come in once in a while. And Jordan, yeah, Jordan McLaughlin, Shake Milton, like Troy Brown that come in when they need to and just make good and do solid things, hit threes, you know, play good defense. Like this Minnesota team is really good, man. Chris Finch has got them playing really well um their team you kind of again have to take seriously you know they probably won't be a first round exit like a lot of people think they are because this i mean this defense you know as long as they have this defense they're going to be able to win games are going to be in every game at least because i mean his defense their defense is just so great i mean they have the defenders everywhere to go bear protecting the rim then the perimeter you have anthony edwards and Jaden mcdaniels who Jaden mcdaniels is one of the best perimeter defenders and anthony edwards you know is a really good two-way player and himself, they got Mike Conley, Confidence Towns, who maybe aren't the greatest, you know, in terms of you think about defensively, but they hold their own as well. You got Nikhil Alexander Walker, Kyle Anderson that come off the bench and, you know, can defend. Like the, the defense is there. The defense is there. Offensively, you know, it hasn't been amazing this season, uh, even though they do have guys like Anthony Edwards, Confidence Towns that can go off and drop 30, you know. But, I mean, defensively, as long as they're doing their thing, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be in some games. But yeah, this was, that was a great game last night. I mean, that was a really high anticipated game. Obviously, the two top seeds in the NBA going against each other. And it was a really wild finish, really intense game. A lot of good defensive matchups, physical game, you know, intense, big shots, 
stuff like that but boston eventually pulled out the win thanks to jason tatum you know being jason tatum and doing his thing you know but there's a lot it was a good slate of games overall last night I had a couple good games Wemby had his first triple double uh he had two more overtime games rockets bulls sixers hawks you know like it was it was a good slate of games last night but boston milwaukee was the game that i really want to talk about because that game you know was fire now boston goes to milwaukee today and they play in milwaukee so who knows how much legs the Celtics have under them you know for this game but we'll see um yeah very excited to watch that game tonight and yeah man boston minnesota what a game that was but yeah, that's gonna be it today hope you guys enjoyed once again if you like the content around here consider subscribing like turn notifications also like that i'd really appreciate it really upset a lot and uh yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow